Hey, it's Jack. Good to see you again. Hey, I wanted to do a video about the Roland VR One HD. I, I hope I got that right. I bought the Roland VR One HD thing. Oh, I don't know, maybe late 2020 or early 2021. I'm not exactly sure when I bought it. Uh, and I bought it because I saw Sarah Dietschy do an interview with me, Kevin, um, uh, about his studio that he uses, his $200,000 studio tour, whenever Sarah Dietschy did that video. And he was uh, using the Roland VR One HD. And uh, I was very impressed with it. And so I started using it um, for a podcast. It took me a really long time to figure out how to use it because the videos provided by Roland are uh, awful. I mean, the guy looks like he's, um, uh, he should be like in a hostage tape or something. I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he's not blinking in Morse code. The Roland Company videos are horrific. There are some other YouTube users out there who made some much better videos. Thank you so much. Um, so anyways, I stopped the podcast. That's a long story. But I stopped the podcast and I put the Roland on the shelf for seven or eight months. And then most recently, I wanted it back again so I could do some live streams and also produce some higher quality videos. So it ended up that uh, I had totally forgotten how to install or, and connect everything. So I wanted to make this video for myself as like an archive and also for anybody out there on the internet that wants to learn how to hook up their own Roland VR One HD. So I'm gonna get into the details of that. Uh, let's go. Okay, let's take a look at the basic components. We have uh, a laptop with an external hard drive so I could save my finished product on the external hard drive. I've got the Roland itself, an iPad, a monitor, and a camera. Uh, this is my Canon T7i. All right, and with that, by the way, I'm shooting with uh, the 24 millimeter lens. Let's take a look around the back of the Roland to show you exactly how we set this up. Okay, so on the back of the Roland, you've got several uh, slots. The first slot there is for the memory. I don't use that. Uh, the next two are HDMI inputs. Uh, and I'm using two inputs in this particular case. One for the camera I showed you and one from the iPad. Now, uh, we're going to talk more about the iPad in a second. This is the microphone cable, which goes right into the front of the uh, Roland, there's also a second one off to the side. I don't use uh, port three. Oh, if you could, if you wanted to, if you wanted to use a third camera, you could. Uh, I don't use the through or the main. I only use the monitor. This goes to the monitor, which is over here. And this is what is outbound to my hard drive. So anything that shows up on this monitor will show up in the final video product on the hard drive. We then have a super fast, and you know, take a look at this here, you see how, uh, there you go, there, you see it's not focusing, but um, we have a super fast USB stream cable. That goes into the super fast uh, USB port on the side of my laptop. Very, very important that you use the super fast uh, and then we have the uh, power cable here. <clears throat> now, a little bit more about your video inputs. With the Canon camera, the uh, video HDMI is, uh, I'm going to probably use the small term here, but it's a mini HDMI, and it has to, you have to get a cable that converts that mini so that the inbound to the back of the Roland is... Uh, the regular HDMI. Very, very important. Now, one other thing about the camera. If you set your lens to autofocus, you're going to get this white box along your uh, camera. So in order to get rid of that, what you got to do is have it focused. I use the subscribe pillow right there. I use the subscribe pillow. I get my camera in focus, and then I just flick it to manual. So for when I'm shooting the video, I'm in manual, and I just use the pillow 
to figure out what the focus needs to be. I find that I do need to reset the focus every time I reuse the setup. And then of course, once I have that in focus, I just plug the uh, HDMI cable back in, we're all set. Over on the back of the monitor, I have uh, an inbound cable from the Roland, which of course is comes from the monitor uh, slot. I have a headphone jack so that when I play videos as part of my presentation, I can have that going into my ear so I can hear the video that is being recorded into the file. And lastly, this is the power cord for the uh, monitor. Now I had a heck of a time using a personal computer to be a second HDMI input to the Roland. And Maybe you got a computer to work, but I couldn't get it to work. Uh, I had to use an iPad, and I went down to the store and bought a this little adapter thing, which is glitchy. You can see it kind of glitch there. This thing's like 40 bucks. And, but when you connect it to your iPad, somehow uh, AirPlay makes the rolling think it's a camera. So by doing this, I can play videos, as you can see here. I'm playing this Saradici Meet Kevin studio tour on my iPad. It's going out as connected to the AirPlay, and it's showing up in my video file. I hear what she is saying by using the uh, earphone thingy that's connected to the back of the monitor. To record, I just simply uh, open up my VRHD1, do I have that right? RCS, which is the software. I have some presets here, uh, which are not really anything special. I connect those, or open that, then I hit connect, and it's gonna ask me whether they wanna follow the software or the manual controls on the Roland. I'm gonna go with the software. And then I just go up for me, and you might be different, but I go to audio mixer. And then I can see my levels there. I, that's me talking in the background, obviously. If I was to bring Sarah Dietschy back up and meet Kevin, you can see that their levels are now showing up uh, as part of the stream. You can see them there now over here, right? So uh, because I have some scenes set up on my Roland, so if I just push this one button, it just goes to me, or if I hit scene A, then um, I'm minimized and whatever video I'm showing, or web page for that matter, uh, gets the full treatment. So that's how that works. If I want to save my, my file when I'm not live streaming, I just launched the Roland Video Capture for VR, and it's really simple. I just hit the save file, it will save the file, and uh, you're done. This is insanely simple. And you can see the resolution that it's gonna be in, and uh, the audio inputs and the video input, it's just fantastic. Th this works very, very well. I would also say, when I was doing the podcast, when we were using two cameras, and <clears throat> we were using the video follows audio feature. Once we got that set up, it was fantastic. And I did have to use two of the same type of cameras. So I actually have two of uh, these Canon T7i cameras. So the one is on loan to my friend right now. I can also connect to third party sites like say uh, StreamYard click live stream and you have all your channels here. Uh, it, this works just fine because what comes out of the Roland VR one HD thing is effectively a USB stream and that is allowed to be seen by StreamYard and other sources. So in doing it this way, basically what Kevin has done is he's used the Roland VR one HD to create a television newscast quality without any editing because all of the editing is done in broadcast just in the same way that we would edit our photo in camera before we you know so so like I, when i take a camera 
or when I take a picture, I never use Photoshop, ever. Well, I don't wanna say ever, but hardly ever, extremely rare. Like nothing I use, I don't use Photoshop. Uh, I use Photoshop for thumbnails, but not for photos. And that's basically what Kevin's doing in producing his show. Uh, when he gets his file, when he downloads his file, uh, all he has to do is cut off the front of the show where he was just like, you know, hitting the buttons to start everything up and the back of it. And he doesn't have to edit anything in between. Therefore, he can produce three, four, nine videos a day because his production is all done and his editing are all done simultaneously by just pushing the buttons to change from scene to scene. As I showed you, I just have two scenes, but uh, Kevin has... Kevin has additional uh, rolling uh, equipment that's a much higher level. This is more like the prosumer level, this model here. Um, but basically, even if you're starting with this one, you can have multiple scenes and basically edit your video while you're making the video, which is, which is brilliant. All you have to do is push a, a scene here, just like you're, the, you're both the broadcaster and the control room at the same time. And the Roland does that very, very well. Uh, as, and as I said, it does it great for a uh, two-camera podcast or even a three-camera podcast. Once I said it, I basically forgot it. And we would do a you know 45-minute hour podcast. And we wouldn't think anything of it because the Roland has got it done. And I don't have to do any editing at the end of that other than cut off the you know first, first 30 seconds, the very beginning and the very end. And I'm done. All right. Hey, I'm Jack Gately. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.